going on, gang? It's your boy, DBGTX-YT, and today we got a battle tutorial here on this new Dragon Ball Z Kakarot Super Card Warriors game. If you guys have not been playing this, if you've probably been hearing it from Rhyme, you've been hearing it from a lot of the anti-tubers, of course, that this is an incorporated portion a multiplayer portion of Kakarot built into Kakarot um, it was just released last week on a patch uh, with the latest patch update it's rounding into the DLC 2 that's coming out pretty soon so we got this multiplayer game and I thought that this would end up being kind of a mini game kind of thing it wouldn't be too um, how do I say this too um big that's the word i didn't think it was going to be this big but holy cow these guys really put effort into this portion of this game this multiplayer based portion of the game it is a trading card game style uh system so essentially it's turn based and whatnot if you play pokemon Yu Gi Oh, things like that you get into it pretty easy but this video in particular is made for those who are yet to learn the ropes of the game or starting to come in early or just got your hands on Dragon Ball Z Kakarot and want to know how to start off on the right foot in this particular side of things. So in this video we're going to tackle five different things that are going to ensure that you have maximum efficiency starting off the gate in this game. The very first thing that we're going to talk about is beating the actual solo player game and the reason why i say that is because by actually doing the solo player experience over in the main story mode you unlock an immense amount of content when you log in to the dragon ball z kakarot super card game so for every mission you beat in dragon ball z kakarot for every side story you've done in dragon ball z kakarot for every collectible you've got in a Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, you'll get new medallions, you'll get money, you'll get Z points, you'll get card points, you'll get premium tickets, you'll get summoning tickets, all of that which will help you start off on the right foot. So it's an incentive if you ever want to get on this side of things. There are casual non-training battles so you can just play the computer and follow, you know, a little uh, either tutorials or playing you know, against the computer versus playing online and whatnot, earning your daily points and all that good stuff. If you're just like collecting cards slash units or, you know, you don't want to battle people online. So there are ways that you can continue doing said missions. But the missions that are for the rank mode and casual mode, those are very important. But that's a whole different segment. The very first thing you want to worry about is making sure that you complete the Dragon Ball Z Kakarot solo experience and that way you get a lot of a lot of a lot of a lot of different things unlocked or not unlocked but you know given to you right off the bat now that we're done talking in that regard now we're going to actually start talking about the other portions of the actual gaming system and Let's go ahead and hop into the deck section because the deck section is important. Yes, I named my deck section almighty. Um, I'm going to go ahead and create a new deck. Um, just to make a new deck to kind of show you guys how the cards work and how things work and whatnot. There are all the units in the game right here that are unlocked, uh, that are locked and unlocked at the same time. You could go ahead and open that up as you guys can see at the top portion right there it says press square to view all cards or press square to view only your cards viewing all the units in the game is important starting out because you will get points you will get premium tickets you will get enough to do summons enough to build some kind of blueprints some kind of blueprint to your own unique deck my unique deck is a bit low aim high if it makes any sense if 
you ever watched Yu-Gi-Oh! in reference to Kaiba versus Yu-Gi at Duelist Kingdom. My decks are very much built like Yu-Gi's deck, who are shields slash can do decent damage, but then I'll have one unit or two units that can come out and deal massive damage and also hold down the fort. I also have event cards or magic cards and spell cards that help my deck kind of stay consistent throughout the entire battle so it's kind of a grinder in a game of attrition that's the way i play but there are other styles of gaming out there and it's very important to know exactly how you want to go about this, your strategies and what kind of deck you want to build because you will come with the basic deck that everyone has across the board so a lot of these cards are essentially Units that are from across the board, like this one, all of these, etc. etc. It is important for you to go ahead and go and to view all cards. And before you waste a single point, you go ahead and view and read what these units do. Now, I'm going to give you guys the most important units to me that every player should have in their deck. And if you don't have it and you have enough to buy them via the card points, I very much recommend you to do so. The very first unit that I honestly think that everyone should have, and this is very important, is the Namekian Shield. The Namekian Shield is the number one weapon for me. Units are very important in the game. <clears throat> Without a shield unit on the field, you can get attacked directly. Even if you have a card on the field, you can get attacked directly. So field units, having a shield are always perfect. This particular unit right here allows you to make any card or any unit, attack unit into a shield. So that means that they have to get through that card in order to get to you automatically most important card to me the most important card in the game most important unit in this section will also have to be kid gohan here now you can go one way or another honestly i believe that the namekian shield will probably be better because it has zero cost and then you can just use whatever unit you have on the field so that means you could change a level 10 unit into a shield and by doing so now your level 10 unit, who also more than likely has an insane amount of health too, can dish out attacks and withstand attacks. And they gotta get through that unit first in order to get to in order to get to you. The third most important card, one of my most important cards to me, has to be has to be this one right here, the rescue mission accomplished. The rescue mission accomplished, as you guys can see on the screen right here, um, causes two SP characters. And SP characters are special units, as you guys will understand SP, right? They're special units that can only be summoned under certain conditions. So, like, if you use a fusion card to take two of your units on the field, and whatever the equal value of the numbers can summon you know a special condition unit this card can do something similar instead of having to use two cards on the field you can use this particular unit right here and summon two high level you know special units that they all have an event or a condition that they can use automatically upon summoning and on top of that this card also gives you a draw one getting an additional card every turn is important eat through all the units but i'm going to give you my personal favorite the ones that i think that they are the ones that you should have and from there you just want to build the deck that you feel comfortable with but this one right here has to be the most important unit out of the three i've mentioned now this is a double-edged sword card, but it is the only card that outright lets you summon 
any level SP unit in the game, no matter how what level it is, right? And the SP side of things, these are cards, like I mentioned before, that are special condition cards. You can only summon them by using an event or fusion card to be able to get these units out. And you can only have five. So your SP units can go all the way up to level 10 and there are only certain conditions that allow you to be able to bring out level eight plus units as you guys can see here. This unit that I showed you guys here in particular allows you to summon all of these particular units over here. By doing that, you can summon any of these. So if you have a level one, level five, level 10, it don't really matter. That particular card that I showed you guys over there summons any one of these units. And as you guys can see, I got some pretty powerful uh, SP units at this point. Imperative to know that the card that I just showed you guys also, like I mentioned, is a double-edged sword. So if you use that card, the amount of level that this character has so for example this is a level 10 character if you summon this character with that unit what ends up happening unfortunately is that your opponent receives 10 energy cubes to their bank what that means is that if so like i have their bank still collecting energy instead of using it then you can end up giving away the match because then they could go ahead and do a massive combination only because they have so much energy that they can work with, you know, and they could probably have access to their full hand, if it makes any sense. It's something that you want to strategize around. Obviously, you want to use that particular card when there's no energy bank left that helps take that a long way. Um, but that's my three favorite cards. I say this was five parts, but I guess this is only a three part thing in regards to that. Because once you build your deck the way you want to build your deck, you kind of did step three and four, which is kind of building your own meta and looking at the metas and all that stuff. Now the final part here of part three actually will be in a separate video only because it will be a battle and due to that, I want to go ahead and make sure that you know the video itself or this particular video isn't too long which is already going on somewhere in the ballpark of about 13 to 15 minutes so this would we'll just call it part one of two in regards to meta tutorials how to's and introduction into the game and part two will be coming out shortly and it will be a better it will be a battle tutorial showing you guys the ropes the inside outs and the deck that i build personally that i've been using right now to go up the ranks and do my thing so without further ado if you guys enjoyed the video enjoyed the content and love this dragon ball z kakarot video please make sure you go ahead and hit the sub make sure you go ahead and hit the thumbs up so that way it could get put in the algorithm and you guys can continue coming back for some more dragon ball z kakarot super card game thank you have yourself a good day.